Okay, so the first step is how to hold the instrument, which may seem kind of silly, but it's actually a very specific way to do it. And that uses this hand here, which would be my lower hand. I'm not saying left or right hand for the video because I'm left-handed and most people will be right-handed. So I'm just going to call it my lower hand and my upper hand. So you take the instrument, hold it just like that, put your palm right against the bottom of it, and then this goes against your body like this and also allowing you to hold it against your body because if you pull away it just falls okay so that's step one holding the instrument just practice that and really get good at it before going to the next step all right now that you know how to hold the instrument I'm going to show you how to do the first hand technique which is with your lower hand on the bottom end of the instrument. And I call this the rhythm hand because it produces the, uh, the staccato rhythm effects, this kind of stuff. And again, going back to this position, you have your hand like this, so it can roll. I use my index finger as a hammer, kind of. It's kind of a rolling motion with your uh, palm on the instrument. And I'm holding it against my body at the same time. And what I'll do for this exercise is ask you just to put your hand on the top where you mute the strap so there's no, no open tone. It's just a little cleaner that way and you can really hear what you're doing. So to practice that, I would just do linear patterns. Uh, really boring, but it really helps get you used to not only holding the instrument, but getting the rhythm finger really down. So I would play like this. Once you get good at that and you, you won't drop the instrument, you can get these steps. Then try some nonlinear patterns, something like this. So go between those two and practice until you can do it effortlessly. Um, now that we know how to hold the instrument and you've been practicing your linear patterns with this hand and your non-linear patterns, now we want to go to using the other hand. And this hand, I call this the rhythm hand, but this one here is more for getting the tones, the open, the open sustaining tones. And I get that by holding the instrument, leaning against my hand like this, put my thumb around it. I use my middle finger for this, it seems to work the best. And what I'll do is I'll find a place about three inches down from the nut, right about here. It doesn't have to be exact. No need to break out the tape measure or anything. But right around here is what I call the sweet spot. And this is where I do most of my work from. And I also tune the instrument so that when I tap it and hold it, that's in the key I want. You can tune it, tune it up, whatever you want, but I like like if I'm playing the key of D or E, which is what I play in often, I make it so D and E is right here at the sweet spot. And you can also, if you want, take a Sharpie or a piece of tape and mark where it is. It's just a nice way to learn, but after a while it just becomes natural to find the spot. So with this hand, what I'm going to do is practice linear patterns again. And this is actually kind of hard to do at first, at least it was for me. Um, you want to tap and hold. So you get a sustained note, like that. Seems like a simple thing, but it's actually really easy to not hit it hard enough, and then you get this kind of flat thing. So, let me tune it up a little bit. Same thing as before, linear patterns. You just want to tap, except with the other hand, you're tapping and letting go. With this hand, you're actually tapping and holding. And it makes your finger hurt after a while. This is actually harder to do for myself than the other hand. And you want to do the same thing, linear patterns to start. And then uh, nonlinear patterns, which are 
harder to do with this hand because it's harder to go fast. So I'll do like a. And if you really get brave, you can try some basic melodies. But again, you want to just get really good at the linear patterns. It will hurt your hand after a while. It's going to take a few days to really get to where you can do this for a sustained period of time. But um, anyways, tap and hold. And that's, uh, that's how to use this hand. And the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to combine the two. So. You learned how to hold the instrument, you learned how to use this hand, and now you know how to tap out notes with this hand. So let's put them all together and see what we can do here. So it's really just a combination of the two. This is where your drumming technique will start to come into play, whatever discipline you come from, uh, drum set, hand drums, tablas, or whatnot. All right, this is a rhythm that I like to play. Um, I'm going to play it fast first, and then I'll break it down into parts really slow goes like this. Okay, what that is, it's just, uh, again, using both hands the way I showed you in the previous lessons, and uh, I'll go really slow. One more thing I want to show you is something I call the bend, uh, where I bend the note. And I do that by literally bending the instrument. Um, you can't really tell from the video because it's pretty rigid, but what I do is I bend the instrument um, by pushing it away from my body like this, with this hand, I take the palm and my finger and grab it and push it away. But I'm holding it with my hand here to keep it from moving away from my body, so the result is you actually flex the tube a little bit. So I'll hit it. Really cool effect for doing stuff like. Um, so yeah, that's just called the bend. Pretty simple to do, but like all these other steps, it's hard at first. It actually hurts your fingers a bit. It hurt my fingers for about a week when I learned how to do this because you're using muscles that you're probably not used to using. So, the bend. And that's it.